Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using, and that is the Louis Vuitton Artsy MM in the monogram canvas. All right, so let's get started because I have tons of eye candy for you guys today. Uh, with the very first question from my very good friend, MS Panders 10 Check her out. She also has a YouTube channel. She has a beautiful handbag collection, and she reviews them as well. She is fabulous. Uh, wanted to know your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Saint Germain PM. I love the St. Germain, whether it's the BB, which is actually the one that's currently on my fall wish list, the PM or the MM. I love them. I love the size. I love the fact that they're on prompt leather. You guys know how much I've been talking about on prompt leather and the fact that they have the microfiber interior. I just think that they're such beautiful, beautiful bags. Uh, it's very comparable to a Chanel classic flap, only it's half the price. Uh, but I think that they're gorgeous. And the fact that even the PM is a pretty good size itself. The MM is actually pretty large, uh, but the PM is is beautiful, you know, and I am a huge, huge fan of the St. Germain, <laughs> but they definitely don't get the love that I think that they deserve. Uh, all right, next question from Janet Tescan. Do you have any jewelry on your wish list? I do. I have a few pieces or I have a couple pieces that I kind of go back and forth on. The first one being a Chanel pearl necklace. I go back and forth on this all the time. Uh, I think they are gorgeous. I think they are beautiful. They're stunning. And I, I mean, it, I just think that it complements any uh, outfit that you're wearing. However, they are so expensive. <laughs> They're like $2,000 at the boutique. And I always think $2,000 for a fashion jewelry piece, or I can put that money towards a handbag. So I always go back and forth. Uh, but I think that they're beautiful. And if I was to end up getting one, I would probably end up looking on the pre-loved market just because you can find them for at least half of what they are at the boutique. But a Chanel uh, pearl necklace is is definitely on the wish list. Another thing that I go back and forth on is the uh, Cartier Love Ring. Um, and that's only because I have a tendency to wear fashion jewelry. And I love mixing and matching my jewelry all the time. Like whether I have a fun ring that I got for, I, I get a lot of questions on this specific ring. I got it for $3.99, I think or $2.99 at Charming Charlie. Uh, you know, but I love to mix and match my jewelry, and I always feel that if I end up getting a Cartier Love Ring, what if I don't end up wearing any of my fun Swarovski pieces? I don't know, that's just something that goes on in my mind. I know it might sound a little crazy, uh, but then I think maybe a Cartier Love uh, bracelet because you can pair that with anything. And since I max or mix and match my medals anyways, why not? But those two are the ones that stand out the most on uh, what I would like to add to my collection. <laughs> Whether that happens anytime soon, who knows? <laughs> uh, next question from Beautiful You Show. What resale websites do you trust? This is a great question and I actually get asked this quite a bit. Uh, when it comes to me purchasing something on the pre-loved market, uh, I always like to look at, you know, maybe three or four different websites and I always compare them. Uh, but uh, one of my favorites is definitely Yogi's Closet. And the reason why I love Yogi's Closet is because sometimes I feel that they have a lot of different items compared to other consignment websites, uh, but they are definitely a favorite. Another one, is Fashion File, and uh, I know sometimes Fashion File can be a little overpriced on their on their items, uh, but again, they definitely have a lot. They have a huge, a huge selection of items to choose from. Uh, or FirstDibs.com. Those are some of the ones that I always end up going to the top two, I would have to say Yogi's Closet and Fashion File. And the main reason for those two is because they definitely know how to describe an item. They give such a great description of what it is that they're selling. Not only that, they take pictures of every single possible angle, you know, versus other consignment shops. They only give you maybe one or two pictures and then they just describe it as good and they don't really go into you know, too much detail because my, my interpretation of good can be different from theirs, but I love the fact that there's, there's no hidden surprises and Yogi's Closet even takes it one step further. They, I mean, they take pictures of ev like almost every little stitch and there's just so much. And whenever you're thinking about buying something on the pre-loved market, you want to know what you're getting because that way when you do purchase it and you open up your package, there are no surprises. So, uh, those two definitely take the cake for as, as, you know, for the way that they are able to describe the item, the pictures that they take and everything. And plus they have phenomenal uh, customer service. Gypsy 3009. What do you think about the Bulgari Serpenti bags? I personally fell in love and I think I will be purchasing one very soon. The detail and craftsmanship just blew me away. I think they are such a great alternative to the Chanel flat bags as they are so beautiful and less expensive. 
expensive. I agree. The Bulgari Serpenti bags, uh, they have different sizes, and I believe they retail for twenty three to 2500 around there. I could be wrong, uh, but they are half of what a classic flat bag is, but they are so beautiful. The there it's such a simple bag. It's very simple, uh, but it has beautiful lines, a gorgeous silhouette, and the chain detail that they have are just they're just beautiful. They are stunning bags uh, because they don't have too many bells and whistles, you know, on them. Uh, so it has a great price point. Um, however, the only downside to it for me, for my own personal craziness, and I've told you guys before, I'm a million shades of crazy, uh, is that Serpenti literally translates to snakes. And I am terrified of snakes. I know some of you might be thinking, okay, that has nothing to do with this. But I don't like faux snakes. I don't like snakes at all. I don't like anything associated with snakes. It freaks me out. I definitely have a phobia. And just thinking about it, my hands get really, really clammy. Uh, but the opening of this bag is a snake head. Now, I can appreciate the beauty of the bag, but personally for me, <laughs> it wouldn't be something that I could add to my collection. But all in all, it is a gorgeous bag. Like I said before, simple, classic design. But Bulgari bags in general are beautiful and they have such exquisite leather and they don't get the, the love that I think that they deserve either. Uh, all right, next question from Sofina Aslam. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. What's the cheapest bag that you own? Uh, all right, so I have some show and tell for you guys. I have talked about this bag quite often on my channel and the cheapest bag that I own is the Coach Demi Pouchette or Demi Pouch. I can't even remember. It's been so long. I've had this bag for a million years, it seems like. But this is the bag that my dad got me uh, years and years ago, and I just love it. First of all, it's hot pink. How can how can I not love it because it's hot pink? <laughs> and it has some suede detail on the chain and then also on the bottom here. But you can see I've used this bag. I use this bag to death. It has a whole bunch of color transfer throughout. But I love it. And I remember just rocking this bag every single day for what seems like years. Uh, you know, but it's it's so great and it fits so much. Let me see. Do I have anything in here? That'd be awesome. No, I don't. It's dirty though. Let me see this. I just took it out of my little storage, but it has a it has some some wear to it, but I will never ever get rid of it. Uh, and then I also have another coach bag. Uh, and this one I've also had for quite some time. These are the only two coach bags that I have left from the collection that I had. I had a massive collection of coach. I went crazy. Uh, but it is this guy right here. I don't remember the name again, hot pink leather. Uh, and, uh, Robert actually bought this for me. But I loved seeing this lining, you know, because it, again, it's the hot pink and you can see the little CC detail from Coach, uh, but has some wear. And then the, the, the handle does this all the time. So it just stays like that. That bugs me. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of the croissant bag from uh, Louis Vuitton. That's what the handle did. Uh, but I love these two bags, hot pink and from two wonderful, wonderful men in my life uh, who gifted those to me. So those two bags I will never ever get rid of. And even though they might have the less expensive price tag compared to something else in my collection, they definitely are priceless to me because of what they mean. Uh, all right, next question, uh, the cat melon. I know you've mentioned that putting bags in their boxes doesn't allow them to breathe. Do you think that putting bags in a closed cabinet would have the same effects? I'm planning out some closet storage, but I don't want to put my bags in a closed area if it will do more harm than good. This is a great, great question. And I don't think that, um, a cabinet will be the same effect as uh, a box or storing your item in a box because when you put them in a box, uh, you know, it just kind of suffocates the leather and there's nothing for, there's nowhere for, for it to breathe. Uh, but when it comes to a cabinet, even though it's closed, you still have quite a bit of space and you can still let the, let the item breathe, uh, without having to damage, without having to worry about damaging it or anything like that. Uh, so no, I don't think it would be the same effect at all. Uh, and can you imagine opening it up? That gorgeous smell of leather. Woo! <laughs> yes. Uh, before I had this set up, actually before I even started my YouTube channel, uh, I used to have my bags displayed in glass cabinets. And uh, the only reason why I opted against, th against that and I decided to do this is because I was constantly rotating my bags and glass upkeep 
yeah, not the best for, for me. Uh, so leaving them in something open like this always um, just makes it a whole lot easier to be able to, to, you know, transition out of your bags. But I don't think you'll have an issue whatsoever. All right, uh, John Coran. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, I purchased a Louis Vuitton pocket organizer in mid-August, and now looking at it, I see that the glazing on one of the corners shows white under it, and some of the stitching is fraying, and the glazing is now cracking. What should I do? Is it normal wear and tear after two to three weeks? Thank you in advance. This is a great, great question, and I definitely get asked this uh, quite a bit because we all want to know what normal wear and tear is right uh, the last thing that we want to do is have to take a trip to the boutique especially if you live somewhere like need two three four hours away eight hours away from the boutique just for them to tell you that it's normal wear and tear and that there's nothing you can do uh, because everything's always a case-by-case -case scenario but um, you know, I am not hard on my items whatsoever, but I do want to enjoy them. And I think most of us, you know, we enjoy our handbags, we enjoy, uh, we enjoy our SLGs, but we're not going to sit there and rub them up against abrasive surfaces. We're not going to sit there and open up the item a million different times, unless you're the type of person that's incredibly hard with your items. Uh, then I think that they'll start to show wear a little bit quicker, but I can tell you with certainty that two to three weeks is definitely not normal wear and tear. Uh, it might be a manufacturer defect and this is something that I would uh, definitely suggest uh, going to your boutique or actually calling them. You can even text some of your sales associates and show them the wear and they can say bring it on in. Uh, you know but again it's always a case by case and they can't tell you with certainty until they see the item physically in their hands. Uh, but you know I just I just think that Wear and tear is something that I think about after a year, a year and a half. I don't expect it to happen two, two months into having an item, especially if we constantly rotate our items. Though you know, Some of you do it the way that I do. So I don't expect to have the same amount of wear and tear that someone would have if they use the item every single day. You know what I mean? Uh, so you know, I, it's, it's always a fine line because you never know how something will end up wearing and you never know, you know, some people might not have an issue whatsoever for years and years to come and other people might have issues right away. Uh, case in point, my Louis Vuitton six ring key holder, I've had that thing for a million years and it still looks pretty good. It definitely needs to be reglazed, but I expect that because of how old it is. And some people have sent me pictures on uh, Instagram and they've had their items for like a month and it's already starting to crack and peel, that's definitely 100% not uh, not acceptable in my opinion, especially because of the price that it is. It's not like we're paying $5 for something or $10 for something and then you think, oh, I've worn it once or twice. You know, it is what it is. I could just buy another one. No, <laughs> the six ring key holders are what? $250. That's a lot of money. So I expect it to last a lot longer than two to three weeks. I expect it to last a lot longer than one use. Uh, not only that, because of the the fashion house, I expect more from, you know, a company like that. And I know a lot of people give me a lot of hate for talking about some of the issues that I've had with my Louis Vuitton items. But like I've told you guys in the past, I am very, very honest. I'm very transparent when it comes to uh, what it is that I like and when I talk about it, because I'm not going to, um, you know, I never want to look at something with rose colored glasses and think that nothing's ever going to happen to it. I'd rather give you guys as much information and as many facts as possible so that hopefully, you know, you guys don't have to go through what I have gone through with some of my items. Uh, so John, I definitely suggest uh, talking to your sales associate and letting them know uh, they might be able to repair it for free or replace it. Like I said before, it's always a case-by-case -case scenario, but I wish you the best of luck and hopefully everything works out. Next question from Dana Johnson. I'm looking to purchase a Louis Vuitton Keeple in Damia Ben. I saw your video on your review of your 45 and sealed the deal on the canvas print. Now I have to decide between a 45 and a 50. Do you think that there is a huge difference between the two? I'm looking for a weekend getaway bag that I can carry on a plane, and I'm also looking for something that will allow for three days worth of clothing and travel essentials. Any insight that you can provide me would be greatly appreciated. This is a great, great question. Uh, the 45 and the 50, even though it might not sound like it's a big difference, there is. Uh, and both sizes are, um, are perfect for being able to bring them on in a plane without having to check them in. 
but the 45 I actually I have two 45s I have one here and one here and then I also have a 55 down below uh, and the 45 I have used often for uh, for traveling for getaways you know three-day weekends and whatnot and I haven't had any issues I've been able to put in quite a few outfits on there and usually I'm the type of person that when it comes to a three-day weekend I end up bringing six different outfits <laughs> uh, you know and I've been able to uh, fit that toiletry that you guys see over here without a problem however it also so depends upon the type of season that you are going to be using your bag in. And what I mean by that is that even though the 45 is a great weekend getaway bag, as I said before, I've used it quite a bit. Uh, I feel that the 50 just gives you a little bit more space if you're going to be carrying heavy articles of clothing, such as cardigans, jackets, scarves, boots, things like that. Uh, you know, it gives you just that, that much more room that you can fit more essentials with you if need be. So either one, I think that the 45 is great. The 50 is great. The 55 is great. I just love keep balls all, all together. <laughs> you know, I can never, I just want to keep adding more and more to my collection. Uh, but I think that the 45 is perfect for weekend getaways when you have uh, less heavier clothing. And if you need just that extra little bit, then I think that the 50 would be a great way to go. But either one, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, they are just beautiful, um, beautiful pieces of luggage. So hopefully that was able to help. Uh, next question by um, Makeup by Jess W. I'm looking to get a Demi Ben Neverfull, probably the MM, but I have haven't decided for sure in the next few months. I've noticed that you can now purchase it with a rose ballerine interior. One, do you think that getting a different colored interior than red takes away from the resale value? Two, do you know if LV Demi Ben Neverfulls will be offering more colors? Three, should the red color transfer be a huge concern? Uh, okay, these are all great questions. And first one, do I think that getting a different interior than the red takes away from the resale value? Not at all. Especially if the rose ballerine is limited and let's say they'll only have it for another year, maybe year and a half, and then after that they just go back to the red, uh, to the red interior, then I actually think that it will add to the resale value because it was so limited. Uh, but I, I love the rose ballerine interior especially on the Damia Ben, you know, and I thought that I was a big fan of it in the Damia Zor. I like it. I really like them and all. I think that they complement all the, the canvas prints beautifully. Uh, but the Rose Ballerine, the chocolate of the Damia Ben, the Rose Ballerine, it just, it looks stunning. So I don't think that it will, um, take away from the resale value whatsoever. Uh, do I know if Louis Vuitton Neverfulls will be offering more color soon? I don't know. How awesome would that be if they ended up adding a whole different you know, a bunch of different colors, uh, but that I know of, no. And I even asked my sales associate and she said she hasn't heard anything. Uh, three, should the red interior color transfer be a huge concern? Uh, okay. So even though I am a huge fan of Damia Ben, it's one of my favorite prints and I love, I am a sucker for that red interior. It does you know, it, there is definitely some concern when it comes to color transfer, especially if you have Dami Azor pieces. As I've told you guys in the past, uh, I used my Speedy 35 Dami Ben when I had it, and I had a, um, the, uh, what's it called, the cosmetic pouch in the Dami Azor print, and I put it in there. It was in there for a day, if that, and with the movement that I created when I was walking, you know, while carrying my 35, the corners of the Dami Azor pieces actually ended up turning pink just from being in that bag for less than a day because it rubbed against the red interior. So it is definitely something to think about. Um, I still am crazy about the print. Uh, uh, I'm still crazy about the print, even though I know that there is color transfer that can happen with Demi Azor pieces. It's something that you should definitely think about if you are wanting to add a, a Neverfull to your collection. Uh, but I have heard people say that the Rose Ballerine also causes color transfer. That I'm not too sure because I don't have a Rose Ballerine interior, um, you know, bag. Uh, but some people have said that there is a slight color transfer on that as well. So if you guys have Rose Ballerine. And and if you guys have had color transfer, let me know in the comment section down below. I know some people also avoid this by getting, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the organizers, the purse organizers. So if you guys can let us know in the comment section down below, I would appreciate it. 
Anusha S. I recently bought a Speedy Bandolier 30 in Demi Azure. It's my first Louis Vuitton bag and I'm a bit careless with my bags. Like you advised, I left it for three days before using it to allow it to patina evenly. I've been a little careless and now have a few water stains on one of the handles. What's the best thing to do in case I ever resell it? It doesn't bother me. It's only visible up close. Also, my bag term, which is the Fleur de Monogram, left gray scuffs on the little triangles. Any advice? An essay said don't put a cream conditioner, but I could wet the whole handle, which would even it, but darken the patina, but then it won't match. Any suggestions? This is a great, great question, and you guys know that when it comes to reconditioning or bringing your bags back to life, I'm the type of person that I just leave it as such because I feel that it adds beauty to the bag. It adds personality to the bag. I would advise against doing anything to it because if you do go to resell it, uh, I think that water stains or patina is something natural that happens to the bag and it's expected, especially on the pre-loved market. Uh, however, I definitely 100% I advise against wetting it. Um, I don't understand why a sales associate would even recommend doing that because even even though the water may evaporate or it might disappear after you wet it, uh, as you use the bag and as the natural oils in your hands start to darken and oxidize that leather, uh, those same water stains might end up coming up and it might be a little bit darker than you would want and then it will still be a little uneven. So I would definitely leave it as such. Like I said before, that's just what I would do. Sometimes I feel that whenever we try to clean up uh, a bag and bring it back to life, that sometimes we end up doing a little bit more harm than good because we're adding so many different chemicals to it. And, and then we won't have uh, the even patina that some of us would like. So uh, I would just leave it alone. That's just my personal opinion though. Uh, okay. X Chrissy kiss kiss X. So I finally decided to get the Alma BB over the Speedy 25 bandolier. Just my luck, Louis Vuitton raised the price again and it now retails for 790 pounds in the UK. Do you think this bag is still worth it considering it would be the smallest bag in my collection, yet the most expensive and I already have the Gucci Disco, which fulfills the small bag role in my collection and it fits slightly more than the Alma BB. This is a great, great question and I actually brought out my Alma BB so we have a little bit of eye candy. Uh, and I love this bag. Uh, would I end up purchasing it if it was 125 or $100 more here in the States because currently it retails for 1200. So would I purchase it at 1325? I would, only because it has really exceeded my expectations. I never thought that I would say that because it's such a small size, but they definitely add a little bit of a variety because this is canvas and it's a little bit more carefree than getting the Gucci that has the leather and the leather is just absolutely stunning. Uh, I know some people that have both of these and they both like them for different reasons. And the Gucci Soho is just a tad more versatile because you're able to carry it cross body. Uh, so ultimately it's all a matter of personal preference. For me, it was a matter of which one I would end up using more. And I felt that the Alma BB was a little bit uh, more my style because of how I would end up using it. Uh, I'm not too crazy about crossbody. That's not something that's very, very important to me. But uh, the Gucci Soho definitely adds that, you know, brings that to the table. Uh, but I think that they're both phenomenal. And um, I would still end up getting this bag because I'm so crazy about it. <laughs> Uh, you know, but uh, personal preference and really it comes down to if the Alma BB makes your heart sing and if it does, then go for it. Next question from Natalie Cardenas. After months, maybe even a year of watching review videos over and over again, I am set on getting a mini pochette but of course, it couldn't be that easy now that I'm facing the dilemma of choosing the canvas I want. I currently have a pochette accessoire NM in Damia Ben, the pouch from the Neverfull MM in mono, and a zippy coin purse in mono. These may all seem irrelevant, but those are the SLGs I have, and for some reason, I'm taking them into account when choosing the canvas print. Which canvas print would you suggest? This is a great question, and I know what you mean. Sometimes it's hard to choose between the canvas prints or the prints that we want. Uh, when you're set on getting a specific item. Uh, but I kind of do the same thing. Sometimes I want to add a little bit of a variety to my collection. Like let's say if I have too much monogram, I want to add a Dami Azor piece or a Dami Ben piece. So it totally makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay. So here I have my mini pochette in the Dami Ben and the monogram. Uh, I had actually thought about purchasing the Dami Azor, but I decided against it. And uh, the reason is, is because I am very, very hard on my mini pochettes. I use them for so many different things. And even though I do love the monogram, I think it is a beautiful little piece. You know, you have that classic uh, canvas print on there, and then you also have just the, just the right amount of vaquetta. 
I am crazy about the Damia Ben one because it is just that much more carefree. I don't have to worry about any patina. I don't have to worry about water stains. I don't have to worry about anything. And when it comes to an item such as the mini pochette and the way that I end up using it in my lifestyle, I need something that's going to be carefree and something that I won't end up babying. So for me, it would definitely be uh, the, Damia's, the Damia Ben over uh, any of the other two prints. And then uh, this is the order that I would do it in. Damia Ben, monogram and then I would do it the Azor also because the Azor uh, you have to worry about color transfer for example if you were to put it in your Damia Ben um, pieces or anything like that so uh, for me it would definitely end up being the Damia Ben mini pochette very very carefree and you don't have to think twice about it so hopefully that was able to help uh, okay and last question Stephanie Phillips I know you have talked about replicas in the past but I see other youtubers are more vocal about it I'm not trying to be mean but why is that I am very curious and I value your opinion this is a great great question and I don't think it's mean at all and really it comes down to at the end of the day who am I to say what you should or shouldn't spend your money on. Uh, when someone is going to purchase a replica, knowing the facts, knowing what it is that it actually supports behind uh, producing these replicas, they're going they're going to purchase it regardless of what I say, what Sally Sue says, or whoever. Because uh, really, I don't like it when someone tells me what I should spend my money on, you know. And sometimes people leave comments, "Why would you do that? You could do this. You could do that with your money." And I would never want to do that to someone else, you know. Who am I to judge? Who am I to say anything? And I feel that it goes both ways. Uh, I can't sit here and say, I don't like it when someone does this. And then I, in turn, do the same thing to them. Uh, and to each their own. I'm not one to judge. You do you and I do me type thing. Uh, you know, if someone asks me blatantly how I feel about replicas, you guys know. You guys know from what I've discussed here on Minx Monday or on my channel in, in general. Uh, but I'm not going to push the agenda. I'm not going to push it and just be so in your face about it because like I said before, it's not my money. It's not my business, what someone does or doesn't do with their, with their funds. Uh, you know, and, uh, it's just not my style. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, okay. And then I also had some of you guys ask me about the Judith Lieber clutch that I have. I actually have two of them. I've had them for quite some time, and the reason why you guys have never seen them is because they're usually on this shelf up here, uh, but I decided to move my items around. But here it is. Here's the little pink dust bag that says Judith Lieber, uh, and here is my little clutch. Check that out. I love this, first of all, because of the magpie in me. <laughs> Plus, it's filled with Swarovski crystals, and you guys know how I feel about Swarovski. But uh, I had it open, but there you go. There it is. It's just literally filled filled with crystals and I love the fact that it has this little topaz one at the top and then you open it up it's just very small it's perfect I've used this for weddings uh, and I can imagine going to the theater with this this would be fantastic but here it is I love this little guy and it actually came with um, a mirror and a little coin pouch look at this this is so small <laughs> I've never used this but I end up leaving it in there but check that out <laughs> I love this little clutch. Oh no, I ruined it. No, I didn't. Okay, and then I also have another one. So this is all metal. Uh, and then I also have this guy here. And this one's just silver and it's satin filled with Swarovski crystals as well. And it has the kiss lock closure at the top. Uh, this one is a lot smaller. This one also came with um, a mirror and a little coin pouch. This is a little bit smaller and they have little chains. This one I have fit literally a lipstick, uh, some cash, and my driver's license in there. Not too much. I haven't used this one as much, but uh, I love Judith Lieber. I just think that they're so sparkly and so shiny. So, very me. <laughs> Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help you guys out with your questions. Uh, and this week, it's going to be a little uh, funky. I don't know if I'll see you guys tomorrow or if I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, but I do have a video coming up for best items to purchase pre-loved, in my opinion, of course. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later this week. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.